We're in a very remote part of the world. Most marine biologists would have no opportunity to come down here, let alone be looking in real time at these communities that we're working on here, anything from 300 to 1500 metres depth. I lead a small group that's focused on getting images of the seafloor. The overall aim of the project is to get as much information as we can about the seafloor communities in different uh, habitat types. So we're looking for different depths, different slopes, different distances from the ice edge, all of that sort of stuff. We're starting down in this trough, which is down in here, coming up that steep slope. We depend very heavily on the hydroacoustics people to do the swath mapping and produce us these maps of the contours of the seafloor. I mean, there's the, you can see that feature there. And the other thing we're going to move that, say, up to here. The way it works is that we decide where we're going to take the tow. The ship is parked. We drop the camera straight down and we stop it just before it hits the bottom. 0.1 knot, that's just perfect. Mm. And the camera's really stable. Mm -hmm. So we don't actually touch the bottom at all. It just, it just flies at that perfect distance of one to two metres off the bottom. We get to see back in this room on all these fancy screens um, exactly what's going on. And um, yeah, it's an, always an exciting time for everybody. <laughs> the, the camera that we use is not a normal camera. It's actually two cameras and it takes stereo pairs which basically means we can see these communities on the computer screen in three dimensions. It's a big unit uh, that gets towed on a wire with electric cables back to the ship so that we can see in real time the images that are coming from the bottom back here in the comfort of the PSYOPs room. Generally the diversity is pretty high uh, and in the high diversity sites it's absolutely astonishing. Echinoderms which covers sea urchins, sea stars, uh, the feather stars, the crinoids, sea cucumbers, uh, brittle stars. The diversity across those groups has been absolutely fantastic to see. To be looking at those communities in real time in this place is absolutely fabulous. And that's science in action. That, that was literally what we're here for and like finally seeing these animals in their natural habitat like we, we've never seen it here before like oh, 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 oh my god breathe 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 we're collecting two images every second we'll probably drop it back to about an image every 30 to 50 meters we then lay a hundred points on each image and we identify exactly what is under the middle pixel of those 100 points. Analyzing a single image can take up to two or three hours. So one transect can take at least a week to do properly. And we'll be collecting you know, somewhere about 25 transects. So it's a big body of work to collect that information. And we do extract quite quantitative and exacting data. And they, they basically feed these statistical models that enable us to predict the distribution of biodiversity, so species, uh, communities, vulnerable marine ecosystems, right around, the, right around the continental shelf. Once we have that information, it's, you know, it's fantastic information to feed into these statistical models to produce these predictive maps. There are no images from this part of the Antarctic coastline. So this, this is complete voyage of discovery stuff for us and it's an enormously important step in building these models to produce these maps. These maps are the first of their kind uh, for Antarctica, so that they represent a major step change in the sorts of information that's available to policymakers and to those people who are charged with managing this very special place. Here I am at the end of my career and I still get really excited uh, about seeing this stuff and, um, and I feel it's a real privilege to be on a voyage like this, to be able to experience these communities firsthand.